Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel again. Guys, in this video, I am going to uh, explain you how we can model this ball bearing. So right now on my screen here, you can see that this is the ball bearing that I had 3D model inside Fusion 360. So it has few components. It has almost four components. So here you can see. And I had assembled this complete uh, assembly inside Autodesk Fusion 360. So in this video, you are going to learn the complete modeling process of this ball bearing. So without wasting much time, let's dive into Fusion 360 and start modeling this uh, ball bearing. Hi, so we are now into Fusion 360. So here you can see this is the default screen of Autodesk Fusion 360 whenever you will launch your software for the first time. So here you can see here we got the here from here we can go to our data panel so i will click on here to see our data panel and we will click on the home icon here to go to my right project so here you can see this is my right project where we have to go so this, i will just double click on this project to open and inside that we'll create a new folder with the name ball bearing here you can see and i will just press enter to create the new folder and i will just open that folder and i will save this file with the name so i will give this a name of ball bearing here you can see and I will press ok and hi, here I have to make sure that the location is correct we are into right project and in the right folder so I will click on the save so the moment I had clicked on the save here you can see the file has been updated and saved in the cloud now I will close on my data panel here since the work of this data panel is over and we'll go on to here and we'll make sure that our units are correct so we'll check here in the document settings that our units are correct it's in millimeter and we'll also make sure that our design history is turned on so the bottom panel here it shows that de design history is turned on so we are capturing all our design steps or the history so now we'll start creating a new component first so we'll go on to this create panel here and we'll click on this new component and here we'll give it a name to our new component so this one i'm going to write this as an outer ring so i will give it a name and we'll press ok and by default here you can see we got a click here that shows that uh, once we click on ok this component will get active so i will click on ok and here you can see our outer ring is active now this component is active now so we'll move on to sketching and creating this first component so for that what we have to do we will click on this we will expand this here and by default here you can see it got a origin and planes and axis and I will click on here to create a sketch since the right component is active, outer ring component is active. So I will click on the create a sketch from here and I will select the plane on which I want to create my sketch. So I will select this front plane and here you can see the plane is active and we are just normal to that plane and also our sketch tools are active now. So what I am going to do now is first I will create a line that will be passing through the origin. So I will create a line like this. So here you can see this is the horizontal line that I had created and if I drag this line here you can see I, I am able to move this line anywhere on the space so what I will do I will apply the coincident constraint between the line and the origin and here you can see now it is constrained with the origin now I will select this line and convert that line, line to a construction line from here and now this line is just a construction line and I will again go to my create panel here and at this time I am going to select the center rectangle tool from here and I will create a center rectangle like this I am just snapping the point and I will select this center and I will create a rectangle like this then I will define the dimension of this rectangle by using this sketch dimension tool so I will activate the tool I will select the line and I will drag outside like this and I will give the dimensions 31 and this side I want to keep it as I don't I'm not going to dimension this side for now what I, I want is I want this point and this point I'm in the center of the rectangle and the origin in it or vertical position so for that what I can do I can apply the constraint I will activate the constraint I will select both the origins and here you can see both are in the same linear position now same vertical position now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define few more dimensions so I will activate my sketch dimension tool I will select this line and this line this distance I want to keep 53 millimeters and then I will zoom out a little bit and again this distance to the outer uh, side I want to keep 65 so here you can see I had created this now what I am going to do is I am going to create I will create a one more line so I will activate my line tool I will connect this point to this point by a line and then I will convert that line to a construction line here you can see now I will activate my arc tool so this time I am going to use a center arc tool so I will go on to create option here then I will go into arc tool then we got the center point arc tool so I will activate the center point arc tool then I will select the center of the arc then I will select the start point of the arc then I will select the end point of the arc like this so this arc is not st not touching to the line so what I can do I can just drag this and keep on the line so like that now it is constrained so now I have to define the dimension of this arc so I will activate my sketch tool then we will define the radius of this arc as 
12 millimeter and then i want the center uh, to be 8 millimeters from the uh, this this is so i will define that also i will define this at as a 8 millimeter there you can see i will press enter then what i'm going to do is uh, i will just click on the finish sketch for now and here you can see this is the profile i got what i will do i will activate my revolve tool and then i will select this profile i want to revolve uh, i'm not going to select this profile i just need this profile and in the axis i want to select this axis as a revolve axis and here we are getting a preview on a 360 degree revolve and i will just press ok so this is the uh, outer ring so here what i have to do i have just have to apply a chamfers on these two corners the, the outer corners so i will activate my chamfer tool from here inside the modify tool here i can activate my chamfer tool then i will select uh, this corner and this corner i want to apply a chamfer of 2.1 millimeter here you can see the chamfer has been applied on both the edges and will press ok so now we are done with our uh, first component so what i can do i can just click on the save so uh, if any reason if uh, our program crashes we still have the uh, we still have the saved file in the background so we can access that file at any time so to create next component what we have to do is uh, we have to activate the top label here top label component here and here we we got our outer ring and then again we have to go onto this create panel then we ha we have to create a new component from here then we'll write this component as a inner ring so inner ring we are going to create now and we'll press ok and here you can see this component is active now and the old component is in uh, transparent view since it is not active so i will click on the create sketch panel from here then i will go into the home from here then i will select this front plane again as a sketch plane and here you can see and i will turn off my component that is not active to get a better view so this is my origin so i will start doing the things again the same process so what i will do first i will create a line uh, that will be horizontal line here you can see uh, here is a trick uh, uh, here is one problem here i can see that uh, by accidentally i had created two lines here here you can see if i am going hover hovering over the line i am getting two lines so what i will do i will select one line and press delete on my keyboard to delete that piece of line and i now i have just single line what i will do apply the same constraint this constraint constraint between the line and the origin so it is now matching to the origin passing through the origin and here you can see it is not horizontally constrained now so what i can do i can select the line and i will apply this horizontal constraint so li line is horizontal now and now what i will do i will convert that line to construction line we don't have to worry about the length of the line because that is independent it's not of the use for now so what i will do uh, next i am going to create a rectangle center rectangle from here then i will create a rectangle like this and i will start defining the dimension of this rectangle the the width of this rectangle is 31 millimeter and i will drag complete this complete rectangle somewhere here and then what i will do i will connect that uh, bottom of this midpoint of the rectangle to the origin like this but here you can see this line is not vertical it is at particular angle uh, it is inclined so what i will do i will select the line and will apply the horizontal vertical constraint to make it completely vertical and then i will con convert that line by selecting that line to a construction line here you can see so this is how we can do and next we have to define few more dimension that is from the top of the is from this line is 37 millimeter then the bottom of the is from this line is 25 millimeter and we we also have to define few more thing like we have to create a arc so we will go on to the arc tool we'll activate the center point arc tool and then we'll select the center and then the start point of the arc and the end point of the arc here you can see the start arc end point of the arc is not touching to the line so i will simply drag and make sure that it is touching the line here you can see and next thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that this point and this point are on same uh, vertical orientation so after selecting both the points uh, by pressing shift on my keyboard i am able to select both the points then i will apply this constraint so here you can see this uh, small constraint i can show that this point and this point are in a collinear position now i will define the center distance of this point from this edge so this one i want to keep it as a 8 millimeter and the radius of the arc we want to keep it as a 12 millimeter so we'll define the radius as well so here you can see this is the arc we got now we have to apply a fillets on this uh, these two points so we'll act we'll click on the we'll go on to here create panel and from here we can be able to find our fillet tool oh no it's in modify here so i will activate my fillet tool from here then i will select the uh, these lines between which I want to apply fillet so I will select all the two two corners and will give it a fillet of 2.1 millimeter and will press enter here you can see so I had also applied a fillet of 2.1 millimeter and it's equal on both the corners 
So if I change the fillet from here, I will make 3, then it will automatically change it on both the corners. But we'll keep it as 2.1 for now and and we'll click on the finish the sketch since our sketch is done for now. So here you can see I had clicked on the finish the sketch. Then I, again I will use my revolve tool in the same manner we did for the outer ring. So I will select the profile and then I will select the axis around which I want to revolve and I will press OK. So here you can see our inner ring is also completed. If I activate my ball bearing, I will be able to see both the components. Since our component, outer component is turned off, so I have to turn it on. Here you can see these are the two parts that we had created. So now we move on to our uh, next part. So now we'll create our third component. Again, we'll go on to uh, since the top of the component is active here now. So we'll go on to the create panel option from here. Then we'll click on the new component. Then we'll give it a name of the component uh, that is ball and we'll press OK. So here you can see our third component is active. So this ball component, this is just a simple small sphere that we can create in two ways. The one way is to directly go on to here and you, you will be able to find a sphere tool that by which you can create a ball. And the other way is to create a half circle then revolve it, it in uh, revolve that circle half circle by 360 degree angle. So there are two ways. So I will use the simplest way here in Fusion 360. I will just activate my sphere tool. Then I will select the plane and then I will select the origin and I will specify the dimension of it. So I think 24 millimeter is the 24 millimeter diameter is the dimension of this uh, sphere. So I will keep give it given 24 millimeter here and will press OK. So here you can see the third component is also all we had also created but the position is not right this must be between the outer ring and the inner ring that will uh, do when we are assembling our components to uh, to simulate the motion so that will do later so for now this this component is also com completed so we'll activate our top level component here and we'll move on to the next component so now we'll start our next component we'll click on the create option here then we'll move on to the next next component we'll click on the create component then we'll give it a name of that component so this time we are going to create a, a cage component so i will just give it a name of cage and we'll press ok so here you can see the new component uh, is active now with uh, there, there is nothing inside that for now because we have not created anything we'll turn off rest of the components to see the uh, to see it more visible uh, our current active component so i will go on to the uh, i will go on to the home first then i will activate my sketch tool from here then i will go on to the front plane and i will start creating the circle uh, and i will create a center circle like this i will create two circles and I, uh, then i will provide the dimension of this circle so the dimension of this circle we want to keep it as uh, the outer circle we want to keep it as 94 millimeter in diameter and the inner circle that we want to keep it as 86 millimeter in circle so here you can see both both the circles we had created now what i can do i can click on the finish the sketch for here and then I will extrude that symmetrically so I will select the profile and from here I want this to be symmetric and will provide the distance by which I want to extrude so here you can see I had extruded that in both the directions by 8 8 millimeters so the total width is 16 millimeter now and will press ok so here you can see this is the ring that we had created now we'll select the one face of the ring then again I will click on the act create a sketch tool from here so that face is now active to create a sketch on this uh, on this face so what i will do i will create one line from here i will use this origin then i will create a line like this that will be touching to the outer edge of the the ring here you can see and this line i want to change that to construction line so here you can see i had changed that line to construction line and what i can do uh, I think I have to modify this line so I will just press ctrl z to uh, remove that line again I will create uh, the same line uh, this time I want to keep it a little bit longer like this and I will select that line and I will change that line to construction line so this way I had created that line so the next part that we are going to do is we have to create a half circle over here so I will use my arc tool for that I will go on to the arc tool and then I will select the center point arc then I will uh, specify this point as a center point and then from here to here I want to create a arc like this and uh, we have to make sure that the both the ends of the arc is touching the touching the line so here you can see we had created this one then I will create one more circle here so I will activate my circle tool and I will create a circle like this and I will define the dimension of the circle I want to keep it as a uh, 90 millimeter in diameter and I will I want that to be converted to construction line so here you can see I had converted that to construction line and I have to make sure that this point and this this point of the arc the center of this arc is must be touching to this circle so for that i can apply the coincident tool from here i will select the circle and the point and it will get constrained so this is how we can do the things then i will define the radius of this arc and this i want to keep it as 12 millimeter in radius and it is correct now so what i can do i can oh uh, so i i don't want this to be construction line i made it that 
uh, this line constructs as a construction line because of mistake so i will again uh, deselect it to bring it back to the normal line here you can see now i will click on the finish the sketch from here then uh, i want to revolve this this complete profile around uh, this axis by 360 degrees so i will use my revolve tool from here then i will select the profiles and these are the profiles that i want to revolve then i will select the axis of revolution as this line so this will make a cut on this ring here you can see so this is how we want to keep and i will press ok so here you can see we got a cut uh, of our profile here now i am going to apply a fillets on the corners so i will apply activate my fillet tool from here so i will apply fillet on these two corners of 2.1 millimeter and here you can see this is how we got our profiles so the next thing is that we want to uh, get this uh, this cut patterned on the whole ring uh, by eight number of times for that what we can do i can just press shift on my keyboard and i will select the last two uh, last two features and then i will go on to the create option here then i will go on to the pattern and i will activate my circular pattern tool and i will select the axis uh, so I i'm going to select this axis I mean this green axis as a axis of rotation so here you can see we are getting the preview and the quantity we want to change that to 8 number of times so here you can see this is how we are getting the preview and once we press ok so this is what we got here you can see so uh, this is what we expected to do now we'll activate our cell tool so here is our cell tool so i will activate the cell tool and i will select all the three profiles these three profiles here you can see so i had selected all the three profiles i had just not selected this uh, front face profile and i will give it a thickness it of 1.5 millimeter and here you can see this is what we are getting so uh, this is our shape and then last thing left is that we have to create holes on these portions uh, so what i can do i can just go into the front view then i will activate my create a sketch tool from here then i will select this uh, profile plane as a sketch plane so i had activated that now what I will do, I will create one more circle from here. So I will just create a circle like this and this circle I will change that to a construction line from here and I will define that the diameter of this circle. So this one I want to keep it as 90 millimeter. Then I will create two lines. Uh, the one line is like vertical line. Then I will create one more line at a particular angle like this and I will convert that line to construction line both the lines so I will select both the lines and convert that to construction line and I have to make sure that this line is vertical so if it is not vertical then you can simply select the line and apply the, this constraint uh, since it is uh, constraint is already applied so I will uh, it is it is vertical so next thing is that we have to define the angle between these two lines so I will define the angle between these two lines I want to keep it as 22.5 millimeter or 360 by 12 I think 360 by 12 but no 360 by 16 will work yeah 360 by 16 will work so I divided that into 16 parts uh, now I, what I will do I will create a circle over here to create a hole so I will activate my circle tool then I will select the the intersection of both the uh, both of this uh, circle and th this line so I had selected the center as uh, intersection point and then I will drag outside and we create a circle so this one I want to define it as a 2 millimeter diameter of the circle then I will press ok finish the sketch here you can see what I can do now is I will activate my extrude tool then we will make a hole like this I will just make extrude cut by dragging in the opposite direction here you can see we can define that also I can just give it as a minus 1.5 millimeter and so that will be enough to make a cut since the thickness of this one is 1.5 millimeter that we had created using the cell tool and we'll press ok so here you can see this is the cut we got now what we have to do is we have to select that feature that cut feature and then we'll go on again to the create panel option here then we'll pattern that feature using the circular pattern tool from here uh, then i will select the axis i will again select the same axis this green axis and then i will define the number of times we want so it is at the right quantity so i will just press ok so here you can see this uh, cage is also completed we had also completed this cage inside fusion 360 so we had completed all the necessary components to uh, assemb start assembling our bearings so here you can see these are all the components that we had created so total four components that we had created so we uh, here is the trick that uh, uh, this wall we have to pattern it by a uh, eight number of times and this case we have to pattern this by a two number of times so this is all the components we needed to start assembling so now we'll start assembling the things by applying joints and other features so let's dive into that and start doing the things so we had completed all the four components here so what i will do i will just 
Uh, what I will do, I will just drag my components around the space. So here you can see they are all free. I am able to drag every component. Even I am able to uh, drag this component here you can see. But I will just press Ctrl Z one number of time to bring it back. And I want to keep this position. So I will click on here to capture position. Here you can see. So the, now all the position are captured uh, in their position. So still they are all free to move around the space. So the, the trick here what I am going to do is first I, what I will do, I will just make sure that I'm grounding the right component so uh, I will press one more times the control Z to bring back my uh, inner ring and what I will make sure that I am drawing everything outside but I'm keeping the inner ring on the same position so I had not moved the inner ring now I will click on this capture position and then what I will do I will uh, make a right click on the inner ring and will ground that component so uh, uh, by grounding that component means I'm not able to move this component here you can see if I'm trying to drag and move this component I'm not able to drag and move this component but still I am able to move other components so I will just press one more time control Z to bring it back in the position or what I can do uh, okay it's done so the next thing that is uh, we, we are going to assemble this whole component in two parts so first I'm going to make an assembly of cage and ball as a uh, one assembly then I will use that sub assembly and these two parts are the final assembly so this is my planning so before starting that what I will do is I will go into this create panel option here then I will again click on the new component from here and here I'm going to write it as a uh, sub assembly sub a assembly here you can see I have created a new component with the sub assembly name and that that new component has been created here you can see and what I am going to do is I am going to take my ball and case I had selected both the components using the shift key on my keyboard and I will drag this using uh, my cursor into the sub assembly here you can see now both the components are inside this sub assembly uh, component so this is the parent component for uh, for these two components and and the most parent component is here this ball bearing for all the components so these are the two active components for now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to assemble these two things first so before assembling what i want is uh, i want to keep this keep this uh, ring in the correct orientation so uh, if that is not required for now uh, what I will do what I, uh, I will just activate my join tool from here then I will select I have to select the center of uh, the uh, the ball and then I will select the center of this uh, this face so I will just click on any of the edge of this arc here you can see and that has been assembled with that thing so here did we uh, by default the joint type is selected as a reset joint so I, ha I have to change that so I have to change that to a ball joint so I will just change that to a ball joint here you can see the movement it is moving in all the three axes then if I animate the things you will be able to see here you can see and if I will press ok so that joint has been applied so the next thing is that we have to replicate that uh, same thing by a number of times so I will just select the ball and will activate our rectangular tool from here like pattern tool from here this time I am going to use the circular pattern tool so we will activate that and in, in the axis I will activate the axis tool and axis I want to select the this arc as an axis so I just selected that arc uh, to specify the axis and the quantities by default it has taken the eight number of quantities and we'll press ok so here you can see this is how we had created now the next thing is that we have to mirror this case uh, on the other side as well so we'll activate our uh, we'll select our case tool then we again will go on to this create panel option here then we'll got this mirror tool from here I, we had activated the mirror tool the component is already selected then we'll select the mirror plane and this time i'm going to select this plane as the mirror plane so here you can see and if I will press ok so that has been mirrored as well so balls are so this is our first uh, uh, assembly that we had created and now we can just activate our main component from here and then we'll uh, compress this tree to look more better so here you can see uh, this is our component Oh, one thing we had missed we again have to activate our sub assembly feature and what we have to do is we have to go on to the joint option here here you will be able to find the rigid group so we have to make sure that uh, every every component in this sub assembly is a rigid group so is what it will do it will make sure that uh, the things are not moving so I will keep selecting all the components uh, as a rigid group and I will select all the components 
here you can see I had selected all the components I will just press yes here and then I will press ok so now they are all they will all work as a rigid group if, if I try to move any one of the component from anywhere then the whole uh, assembly will move so this is correct now so we'll just click on the revert option here then we'll activate our main component from here the main parent component so this is the component that we had created now the next thing is that hey so our first assem uh, sub assembly is ready here you can see it is free to move inside the space whereas our inner ring is fixed uh, since we had grounded this component so what we are going to do now is we are going to assemble these two components first the inner ring and this sub assembly so for this what we can do uh, we uh, will expand our sub assembly a little bit and we'll turn off one of the keys to to see the face of the other case so what I can do now is I can activate my uh, join tool from here then I will select this I will click on this arc to get a snapping point so here you can see this is the snapping point we are getting the center of this arc so I will just click on here to select that point and then I will go on to my uh, uh, this one uh, this uh, inner ring and I, I will make sure that we are selecting the uh, midpoint of this uh, this face so for that what we can do we can just press control on our keyboard and we will able to select that point so I had selected that and here you can see it has been assembled so if I will just press ok so the complete assembly came over to that point and what I can do now is I, I can just turn on my cage back so here you can see this is how it is looking and also it is, has been assembled with our inner component so I will just click on the capture position then we'll uh, decompress this tree and the last component that is uh, we have to assemble with the uh, this inner ring so for that what we can do we can just activate our join tool from here then we'll select the will hover over to this in inner edge here and when whenever I am hovering to this inner edge here you can see it is snapping to the center of that inner edge so I will just press ok and then I will select the other edge of the inner ring in the same manner and here they are assembling and now I want to keep the motion as a revolute and axis is good so if I turn on the animation so here you can see it is it is rotating correctly so I will just press ok so here you can see here is our assembly and if I try to rotate the things here you can see we are able to rotate the things so we are also able to simulate our motion here and the thing if you want the things to look more more good or more better so uh, there is a feature called component color cycling component color cycling toggle so you can just turn on this tool from here and all the components will get assigned with a different color for more better view so here you can see and if I will just turn off my joint uh, uh, projects from here only the joint uh, icons that we are able to see will get invisible but joints will still be active so here you can see we are able to move our component like this so I am able to move this component as well but uh, here you can see it's all good so this is how you can model your uh, bearing inside fusion 360 and uh, you can apply different uh, different colors on the different components you can join your components using different kind of joints and so there was only trick of this sub assembly that i showed you in this video so i hope you guys had uh, enjoyed watching this video this is a little longer video because there were few components here so uh, if if you if you had liked the content then i will strongly uh, request you to su please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share with your friends because uh, uh, I'm, I'm putting lots of effort in creating these contents and I want that these contents to reach more number of people so thank you thank you guys thank you so much for watching and appreciating me, me because I had also uh, made a complete playlist on a paper cutter knife in the last last week so that I'm getting good response over that playlist so if you had not watched that just go and watch you will be able to find the link below in the description below so thank you guys thanks for watching thanks for coming thank you